No, so I have to I have to sync that with this. And y'all know what a slate is? Yeah, it's like a movie slate where you put the like scene take one. I don't have that, so I'm gonna do a thriller uh, slate, which is. <laughs> Talk so, about marketing for open source, do's, don'ts, and how to. Uh, so, I'm not talking about marketing, marketing for open source, digital, do's, don'ts, and how to. Uh, no, I'm Miles Connell, Destination Linux, and let's face it, open source. As you all uh, know that this talks about marketing, so, and let's face it, open source doesn't have to do marketing. You know, uh, initials so, that don't whether it's a one project or having random you know, uh, initials that the don't mean open source anything, and or seemingly and random parallel music videos. With the marketing department. The open source and Linux community could use some help with the marketing department. And in this talk, I'm going to show some examples of where we do it right, when we do it wrong, and as well as some how to do it properly. As well as some other stuff, that's some extra tips. I am so the creator for those who don't know, again, my name is Michael Tanel. I am also I am the creator and host of this week in Linux podcast. I contribute to a lot of projects. I contribute to a lot of projects. I contribute to a lot of projects. Also, I've been in the Ask No Show, KDE, Ubuntu, and many more. Also, I've been in the design and marketing field for many years. So you can check out my shows by going to destinationlinux.org, destinationlinux.com, and also my personal website at michaeltanel.com. So, this concludes lesson one of Shameless Plus. So, functionality. <laughs> yes, everybody knows this as far as like developers go. So, functionality is important. It's, everybody knows this as software. far as like developers go. However, it's one of the most important Presentation is just as important. Uh, building software. However, presentation is just as important. 
we may be spending a little more of time to go for. So if you don't it depends care, on how, how, how you get up with your perspective is and what you're trying to go for. Right, so if you don't care and you're just like throwing it up and saying, people just have any idea, you don't worry about this. But if you care about anything, if any idea of using people using your site or your software, you need to present it in a way that makes them at least more tribes. So for example, if you ever go into a GitHub page and see a project and there's Nothing there, there's maybe no screenshot, there's no video, there's no sometimes nothing. They it's just they at least have some a text about, maybe sometimes they don't explain it. But sometimes they leave that, sometimes they at least have a, that's a small, is very important for promoting it. So, But uh, everything that you do is very important for promoting it. So uh, the, the best example is if you're going to do something like on GitHub or GitLab or whatever, provide a video of any kind of software you can. But if you can, at least do a screenshot. Because so otherwise, also, if you know, love it, people are just going to get bored and move on. And this means it's like a lot of people who so also if you love it, then you should promote it. content. And this means it's like a lot of people who don't think that it's a lot of effort to do marketing their content because it's just not it's a lot of effort to do, and admittedly so that's true. But it's it's always super so valuable to get it because you're also going to get people to use it and get people to give you some feedback. So if you care about what you're doing and you want people to use it, you have to promote it. It's not it's not an option. Now we're going to go to it's not a luxury. You have to do it. Some don'ts. So now we're going to go to some uh, some don'ts and do's for marketing currently and open source. So first of all, do the Red Hat, they, the do is not showing up probably art and ever. design for your brand. The, they, 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 the do is make your art and your design for your brand modern and make it look good and make it feel like the, the current Don't times of, of wait how you're displaying and presenting your branding. Don't so. Wait 20 years well, okay, to do don't it. Don't wait 20 years yeah. to do it. <laughs> so, so well, okay, don't one. wait 20 years to do it. Susa. <laughs> so the, the next one is Susa. They, how they're, they're doing some parody music videos. Really how many people up here have seen these? That they have made how many, like, just, just raise your hand if you think how many, if that they, they have, have made, made two five. or three of these. Over 10. How many, how many think they've made over five? Okay. You're all right, it's over, over 15. Over 10. So, okay. Most You're of all right, it's over 15. So, but a most of these are, are not. This one's actually really good. Long. They put a lot of effort but, into it. But okay. it's, it's a couple are. This really one's actually really good. They put a lot of effort into it. They have, it's they really, hired it's cast actually the lyrics are pretty good. They match the song itself. They have they hire a cast that, that uh, resembles the people who are doing the original. Like it's they do really they do some dances solid. that are similar. They get some locations that are good. And then like it's a really solid effort. Walk like a chameleon. And then they do this. <laughs> so if you're gonna parody well, like some songs, million. that's fine. But make uh, it yeah. at least you know this deck. So if you're gonna parody some songs, that's fine. But make it at least uh, so you know, this deck. There's also a, a, a video they made called "Can't Stop the Susa." Uh, so there's also a, a video they made called so, "Can't Stop the Susa." Next is Katie. In this case, I kind of so Katie E decided to rebrand the project so, from next is Katie the E. Environment so Katie E decided to rebrand their project nothing. from the K so desktop environment Katie e means nothing. to it's just they changed the desktop environment nothing. to plasma. So, KDE means nothing. How it's just, it changed the desktop environment to Plasma in 2008. How many people are here were aware so, that they like, did A lot of people think they did it in 2014 when they launched Plasma 5. But Very few. Okay, so like, a lot of people think they did it in 2014 when they and launched Plasma they 5, the but Plasma 4 was the first version mean of Plasma. For and they changed the KDE uh, I actually suggest to mean nothing for some I found a tweet from them where they... I actually suggest that they do this because I found a tweet from them where they acknowledge this and made a tweet saying, Remember, the KDE, the KDE is the community. It's Plasma is the desktop. Not an acronym. Well, whereas give known, a definition they just because abandoned it's an initialism, meaning is not an acronym. Known. Whereas known, it's a word, so it's they a just abandoned the whole meaning and stuff. So here's known, a couple that actually get it right. So it's okay. Doesn't that's Pop OS. So here's a couple that actually get it right. That part. We'll that's skip over that. Uh, Pop OS. The, the uh, brand for the majority of the time, they do a lot of stuff. Their polish, uh, polish on their desktop is good. But for the majority of the time, they do a lot of stuff. Their polish on their desktop is good. Their marketing is good. They put a lot of effort into it on their website. It's 76 as well as their own thing. Presentation. Uh, elementary does the same thing where they put a lot of effort in. And as far as design and presentation, they go on a podcast to get people to know about it. And then there's also Zorn OS, which is a lucky board, where in a certain fashion, but they've been doing a lot of recently of big marketing because there's a, an issue that they recognize and fix, which is uh, KDE Connect is 
it one of the best that well tools and utilities so you have on to install Linux, period. Shell extension but it doesn't work that well with GNOME, so you have to so install a separate shell extension called the GS command. So when you go to a thing and you go to try to tell someone, you've got to try this, but also you've got to try this other thing, because when you're using this and working this, so you gotta, it's just more complicated. So they simplified it by making Zorn in there, where they just fork both pieces and just named it that. So you say, they tell their users, just go to the app store and install Zorn Connect. makes it Tons so, easier. You know, so you're consolidate that is a great idea a for a process, you know, and it makes it a lot do, easier. You know, if you're going to consolidate something, it's still make it simpler process, and it know, makes it a lot easier to be able to use it. It's not because a fork. Even still trying to explain, it's a lot of people don't know that GS Connect, Connect is not a fork of KD Connect. It's actually a shell extension that works with KD Connect, so you so, still need to get the KD Connect let's, uh, move Android on to app in order to use it. Why not? So let's move on to some how-tos. Why not? And so, I should probably be ready the first for this. thing I would suggest is to contact media outlets. Because so, there's a lot of the things. The first thing I would suggest is to contact media outlets. There's a lot of because things that there's a lot of things that kind of put it out on Twitter, but they don't. There's a lot of things that a lot of people do where they, they just kind of put it out on Twitter, but they don't so, proactively the best contact people is, who uh, could get more audience to with them. Destination Linux and so the, the best and example and is uh, podcasting and with Destination Linux and Zoom Linux. You can contact both of us, and we'll talk about your project if you, especially with Destination Linux, you want to do like an interview or something. Because there currently is the reverse, where we're trying to find people who are willing to do interviews. And so it's that if sometimes works out great, sometimes not at all. So it's, if it was, if the projects were doing the other way and they were contacting us, it'd be, the contacting us, it'd be a thousand times easier and we'd have much more content to provide if we actually know about these certain projects. We, we recently uh, were contacted by a project that we didn't even know, didn't even know it exists until they contacted us. So that's, like, that's a great example of you know, when they can do it. Uh, also blogs like uh, OMG Ubuntu or Ronix and things like that, you want to get them to know about you so they talk about it. Uh, and the more people who talk about your stuff and your projects, it out. the more that is uh, people the are, the more uh, most people you're going to get to try it out. One of the and that, that is the, the biggest most important piece because one of the things that, 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 that probably the biggest the hurdle for people, people, people who are doing open source, source projects do is the, the is not knowing how to do the marketing and not knowing how to do the design and the creative aspect of presentation. But there is a decent but solution, also and that is one you can source, you can learn it and do that. But you can also just have a crowdsource that are not and necessarily related. And a lot of people who are in the community uh, have a lot of skills so that are not to, necessarily related to uh, development. So if you go to, if you they see any time where they, they ask for collaborations or contributions from a project, very, very they mostly focus on code. But it shouldn't be the and code is important, and that's very, very vital to the project. But it shouldn't be the focus because, because there's a lot of people who you should, you should have, or at least they do not the only focus. They do some because of there's a lot of people who do design, who do marketing, they do some kind of, uh, you so know, there's people who do proofreading, they can help your documentation, there's all kinds of stuff. So you should break down what you most be useful for your project is. And that's where the, the biggest issue that people uh, even though come up the with whole is, we're in this is not system. taking advantage of the community, the, the even though the whole reason we're in this is the community itself. Because the, so, the open source aspect is the, if the you beauty crowdsource it, you'll of find the people, community itself. Uh, such as myself so, who does marketing and general. If you crowdsource it, you'll find people uh, uh, such as myself who does marketing and general, in general for a living who are interested in the, in the idea of helping a project. Like, for example, the KDE I've the project, I've made promo videos for them and a bunch just because of I wanted to. Uh, I've done the same I've thing for Ubuntu a and Kubuntu and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I've, 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 I've helped a lot of different projects just doing like branding uh, suggestions, changing the name of certain uh, projects. Uh, for example, uh, so that's um, unfortunate, but there's a new one coming up called uh, Intergos is, is going away, so that's unfortunate, but there's a new one coming up called Endeavor OS, which is kind of a fork, but not exactly. And they're changing a, 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 a lot of what they're going to be doing for the project and that I think is probably the most uh, interesting thing that they're doing. And, uh, they're doing. and uh, hold on a second. The, uh, the thing that's what I think is most interesting is that they're going to, uh, that they're going to uh, change the, the, old, the whole goal of the Terrorist was. Everybody it was thought distro it's the easy way to get to so much customization. But that's not really what it was. It was a, it was a distro in itself because it had so, so much customization and it so much uh, and extra and features of repos and, and everything that Whereas it wasn't Endeavor truly is basically going and a, a just like an arch install. Give you a lot more options Whereas Endeavor is basically going to be something like that. They're going to give you a lot more options and make it a lot easier to do things, but their focus now they did is just arch installer. They're not going to do all Endeavor the extra stuff. And they now they did some things that when we talked to one of the developers of Endeavor and they talked about 
that, like what they're doing for the branch names. And they weren't that obvious. Like, I, I don't remember one of them was like a Artemis or something was the name of the branch. I was like, just, just call it like that. Or any other one of her other dev development bill or static or something like that. Or any other one of her other dev development bill was called Rookie. And it was like, that's just confusing. You shouldn't do that kind of thing. You should make that's it just another the, the name of whatever you're doing should be obvious. So try to make it. That's another piece that you, you should take into consideration. Uh, don't try to make it. You know, project. Don't name things esoteric unless it's a brand. And every time you brand something, a project, a specific thing, feel free to do so. But every time you describe something, every time you make like a, like a type of install, you want to be clear about what it is and not, nothing beyond that. Because as soon as you start making it any kind of uh, any complication, any kind of convolution, you're going to lose people pretty much. Because a lot of people are just going to see something if, if it doesn't catch their eye in seven seconds. The branding is important. So you need to put some effort into the, the, the branding is important, the way you address the, the description of what you're doing, and how you promote it to people. Because that is the so you should promote it to as many places as you can, because that is the, but, okay, the, the, the fundamental thing. Question I, I have a lot of people who ask what me, what is the, what is like, the best the, social okay, the first, the number one question I'm asked as a marketer, what is the best social the media platform always that I should use in order to get people to know my thing? And the answer is always what people don't want to hear, and that is everything. You should use every single platform that exists. Now, to be fair, there are a lot of platforms that people have never even heard of, so you could probably skip those. But even like new, the trendy ones, I'm going to... So, admit it, I, I do have a TikTok but account. There's, there are other things that <laughs> so, are, you know, for example, uh, yeah, have you, how many people here but have heard of a... a there's, there are other things that are, you know, for example, is there, how, many, how many people here have heard of a, 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 no, a, a, okay. a social that's platform what I called Plurk? So there's a, there's Plurk, there's a bunch no. of other ones that are okay. similar. Okay, that's Plurk what I expected. Like clone, sort of so there's, a, there's Plurk, there's a bunch of other ones that are similar. Plurk is like a Twitter clone sort of. All of the main and and there's, there's a ton I of things, but you want to at least be on all of the main tasks. And I can totally understand why that's yes, you know daunting no task, and you might go, "There is some automation work. tools that I will get to in a yes. second." Yes, it is. There is no way around it. To do it. There is some automation it's tools that I will get to in a second, but you and still need to do it because it is no a fundamental requirement. So, let's go. And unfortunately, there's no way around, around that. So, so let's go next to there's even the tools I mentioned. Tools, but there so, is so there's a lot of tools for marketing. There's even so open source marketing tools, but there's easier, but those are all there's thousands of you know services and stuff that you could do to make it easier, but those are all you know, premium stuff. Analytics and is the next thing that people are not is aware analytics is something you know, Google that people are not aware so of how important it is. Which now Google Analytics is all so. And I use Matoma, which is a self-hosted analytics platform. For marketing, if you don't and know analytics is marketing absolutely the most, one of the most vital things for marketing. Because if you don't know and, and who you're marketing towards, what, what they want, they and what traffic and, and the, the data that you're collecting about how exactly what they use your content or what your software, a lot of the time you don't know exactly what direction people are wanting you to take. Because a lot of the time, the unfortunate thing is that people don't let you know. It's an unfortunate situation, but it is a fact that the majority a, of users, if they like something, they're not going to tell you they like it. That's a, a, an unfortunate situation, but I think it's something that we should all take into consideration that we have to address in some way, and analytics is it doesn't the have best to be way to do it, because you can at least do some kind of data collection. And it doesn't have to be so data collection in the sense of like telemetry, awfulness, or whatever. But, so, Matomo gives you a lot of options for a self-hosted aspect, it gives you a lot of options for, a of for the, the idea of just uh, you don't customizing how much you get from someone. So, for example, are using your sites you don't have to actually track the IP addresses for the people who are using your sites or your software. With Matomo, you can say, I only want this region of IP. So you can knock down the last two uh, sections of the IP address so, like that is and basically just know data. what country they're from. Allowing you to still collect data so, like, that is a great feature of being, you know, you're allowing you to still so collect data without of, should you know, be violating privacy and that kind of thing. Pretty much every so, it is something that should be taken into consideration. Kind of a shame that Pretty much every single you know, project should have projects telemetry. And I think that it's kind of a shame that, doing analytics or you know, when people when projects just, you know, an, a, announce that they're going to be doing analytics or they're doing telemetry, people just, you like know, for example, when Ubuntu some cases lose their mind and other cases just and refuse to use it. Like, for example, when Ubuntu announced that they were going to add analytics or telemetry to their stuff by volunteering to pay in. Like still you still have to choose and to that's send one of the things that it, but they 
I still got a ton paid for it. And that's one of the things that annoys me as a marketer of not having this data. Because when someone says, oh, you use Linux, how many people use that? I don't know. And there's also downloads. Because it's impossible to but Because they don't keep track of who does it. And there's also downloads for ISOs. But those are massively skewed because, let's say, for example, you don't live in the country where the project is made. So you download from a mirror. The mirror doesn't give the stats to the people who made the project. So they have no idea who you have done it in So without having this information, you're losing a ton of value of keeping now, track of what you need to do and what, how, what direction you need to go in the future. And, and now, the, as far as the automation, the social media aspect, and I'm, I'm fixing the, you can automate to a the automation there are certain things uh, process that I was talking about. Don't try to you can automate to a degree. There are certain things you shouldn't automate, like don't try to repost so, a tweet on but there are Facebook things you can or something. So, but there are things you can do and automate with. Have you ever, has anybody here heard of If This Then That or Zapier? Okay, nice. So, there is one that's an open source alternative called Hugin. It's a weird yes, it is, but it's, it's a really Huggin. cool software. And it allows you to uh, it's a weird the same name, but it's a really more cool software Zapier. because it allows you to create the same kind of situation uh, more likely to Zapier than it is to if this variety of things. So, if, for example, you post uh, a blog this one on WordPress, allows you to create a variety of things. So, if, for example, you post you a blog a on WordPress, you can automatically post a tweet using Huggin. Or if you have a video that's on even YouTube, you can, you can do, do the same thing for wherever, whatever platform you want. And there's even ways that you can do do it in multi-levels. So you can do a, you know, post something on YouTube, but it has a specific tag in the, the description, or in the, you know, in the, the actual upload. Once you have and then, if it has that tag, then do it. Or, once you have a video uploaded, if that video has also been shared by someone else, like another project that you, you are a part of, then share it based on this. So you can do like multi-level, multi and multi-depth uh, sharing with Huggins. And it's also not just for social media, it can be done for all kinds of things. So if it, has, it, does, it, if it works with like REST APIs, you can basically so just into it. The next one uh, but it does, it does a lot of great too. And so I don't know the next one is, is another great tool. And I don't know if it's, like, it's really probably, large. probably it's one of the most unknown uh, while still being fairly say. large. And that's right. Modic. Modic is a uh, Modic, I don't know if that's how you say it. Open source platform. They also have like a Modic is a, a, a platform, an open source platform. They also have like a you know hosted version where it's premium service stuff. The, which by the, the way is a good tactic is for essentially open like source models. An open source but the, the Modic <laughs> platform is it's essentially like an open source MailChimp, but much more than that. It does social media platforms, it does text messages, it does all kinds of stuff. There's in addition to the mail emails and marketing Modic is a great so there's quite a few things, and I think Monic is a great, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic piece of software, but it does require a lot of build setup issues. So they, but they do have a lot of issues. So there's, there was actually a review, and Huggin has a doctor about well. Monic. Uh, so there was there was actually a review, a couple of reviews about Monic, and, and basically the only negatives they came up with is you know, it's hard to install. Using these kinds of things, and, and any kind of source project would be you know accustomed to using so, these kinds of things. So uh, that basically uh, comes to an end of the talk, hard. as far as so, I talk really fast. Uh, that basically comes to an end of the talk, as far as I talk really fast this particular time. Talk so before, that's what happens when you finish here. You prepare your talk the day before, so and that's then don't happens, finish but, uh, it until 40 minutes prior to you starting the talk. Uh, so that's what happens. But uh, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, I have uh, michaelsnell.com and at michaelsnell pretty much everywhere. Uh, also, uh, did I mention that I make mean, podcasts? Uh, there's and destination Linux. Do word. Want to do this is much touch with the dot slash this would Linux. And if you it, want to do some no extra tips, what, tips of, uh, some way. of marketing, and I know there are going to be every platform, no matter what, is useful in some way. And I know there are going to be people here who would say, why don't you use Facebook? Like because they're, right. they're, you know, they're a violation of atrocities and stuff. And if you're right, you are right. But you were, if you've been a marketing aspect, and they need to be where the people are and where you want people to use it. So if they're on Facebook, you have an account on Facebook. Now, you can do what I do and literally use nothing else except promote yourself. And that's totally acceptable for you, know, you in, the, in the marketing sense. Uh, but being on every platform is important. Even Instagram and just post random videos. Like if you're in a talk, just make a random video and post it. That's useful too. So, um, but I think the fundamental. Uh, when you want to do marketing, so the final thing to take from this is, there is one, the when you want to do marketing, whether it's open source or not, uh, heard of, there is one, the, like one the, the best tip I've ever uh, 
uh, heard of, and it's been, I've, and this is uh, like one of the fundamental is, things of marketing don't that, ask, that, that, I, that I've learned like 20 years you ago. Never promote your stuff and you is never tell about if you it. don't ask, you don't get. Because no one, like, if you never promote your stuff and you never tell anybody about it, no one's going to use it. Because no one, like, almost no one's going to like look for something. They're looking for depending on what it is. Like, they might have some random esoteric thing that they're looking for. They might so many different ways of doing. But for the most part, you need to let people know. And there's so many different ways of doing so, but the probably the best way would be to just uh, go on these social media platforms, contact podcasts, contact blogs, and then let them know you're making something and see if they're going to promote it for you. And if and also in the terms of like podcasting, asking if they do an interview or something like that, there's so many different uh, variables and, and opportunities to do that. But if you don't ask them to do it, you're never going to get there. Might be some just because uh, well, statistically, you're never going to get to. It. There so might be some random I think that the, that happens, but for the, the, the thing is, if you don't ask, you don't get. So, and I think that the, you ask, the, the thing is, if you don't ask, you don't get. And if you do ask, so that, that's like be, marketing be is comfortable with interesting enough. thing. Because so, everyone that, that's like marketing is but an interesting thing because everyone can do it technically uh, speaking. Willing but it takes people who down. are... 90% of the time. Uh, willing to uh, be turned uh, down 90% of the time. If you don't to, accept the uh, fact that you are going to be shut because down, because if you don't, it's going to be a, if you don't uh, accept the, the fact that you are going to be shut down, so you, it's I, going I to be a, a, a frustration. Or it's just another frustration uh, for you. Multiple so I've I've been you doing marketing for like two decades, uh, and multiple the, years the over. I don't want to admit it, but like two decades. And the, the I've marketing had many times aspect where of it is, I've heard, I've heard no. As a word spoken to me, I've had many times where I've heard, I've heard no so as a word spoken to me in multiple languages, more so than anything else I've ever heard. Get, like, because if you if you constantly do something like this, you're you're never gonna get like because good enough much, where every time yourself, you pitch something, it's gonna go good. Will, there, because will pretty much you probably notice yourself because there's a lot of times people will like a uh, contact you for just some, like, you know, try to do some service for you or something. Default response Maybe it's like a lawnmower or a lawn care company like, or something. Oh, and no, your default response no. is no. You don't even think about it. You're just like, no, I don't care. oh, uh, yeah, but that's uh, no. Something that marketers don't even finish the sentence, no, day. I don't care. And especially but that's something that marketers deal with every day, this, the and especially for tell marketing. marketing. But uh, the, 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 the fundamental issue is that marketing and forcing is yourself to continue a, a battle with yourself and forcing so, yourself to continue even um, despite your I constantly think that's losing that's the, the war. Tip is so, um, if you I think that, that that's the best tip. The tip is uh, if you are if you're comfortable if you, with being told no, if you don't ask, you don't get. The best if you are comfortable with being told no, because you're gonna you, the best thing to do is crowdsource uh, funds. People who will be doing it for you. Like for example, I participated in so many. There's plenty of opportunities for people who want to. Like for example, I've participated in so many communities. And they never asked me to do it. I just showed up and did it. And if you were to actually ask for help, even like you'll see these constant requests for wallpapers for community. Why is that? Why is that such a popular thing? Is because they don't they don't think about any other thing they could ask for. They could ask for all kinds of stuff. And wallpapers is just the easiest one to do because they don't have any obligation to it. It's not a big deal. If people don't do it, literally, you know, etc. But there's there's no reason not to ask for literally anything you want because even if you, whether you ask or not, people don't like appreciate your asking because they think you're being selfish or something. Maybe there's one or two that will want to do it, and then you get it for you know, doing for get it for free and help each other out because it's the whole point of open source is to collaborate and help each other out, and that is the fundamental piece to this particular talk. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll just open up to Q and A now. All right, first. What does Malte actually do? Because I've been on their website for it's like 10 minutes. Bingo, and it's just a bunch of hand wavy blah, and yeah, change the it's world. It's keyword bingo. Of what it is. I have it's no it's idea what it actually does. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, the majority of what it is is, is a marketing, you know, marketing platform uh, variety with different email, different text messaging, social media so automation, it's a, it's a really cool uh, variety of different like results and analytics built into it. So it's a, it's a really cool in the sense that you do an email marketing campaign and you can check to see like A-B testing, which one is working. Hot and which one is like on. failing, and then you can just switch around. And it does a lot of like hot hot points on so it's like the things that they clicked in your email and, and all like kinds of different analytics to that stuff. So it's basically and Mailchimp media, like plus like SMS type of marketing and social media like Hootsuite combined into one and then adding some analytics on top. Okay. Someone else? 
Yeah, I was just curious. <coughs> Can you think of a open source project that checks all or most of the boxes in terms of does good marketing that is not either not backed by a large company or is maybe backed by a large company or no. does independent marketing? The long answer company. is kind of. The ones Short I listed answer is no. are, are long kind answer is kind of. Well, one of them is Zorn. The ones I listed I mean, there is are, are kind of that because of, of, well, one of them is Zorn OS. I mean, there is sort of a company that started as like a, a project, and they're kind of making their company off of it because they are doing commercial things where you're selling the they're selling the software value to it. Even and I think that's actually a good model. I think that's actually a good model because you're adding value to it. You're adding value to it. Even if like you know, even if like for the example, most people are are buying software from Zorn OS. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think people were offended by them asking for money. I think they give you some extra like customization options and stuff like that. But that's all it is. So you can still do all those things if you wanted to, but they provide a still giving out the software for free. And I think that's the best approach because you're you're still giving out the software for free, but you're also giving an extra bonus premium if they want to pay for it. And they also do the whole branding aspect where they rebrand things. There's actually a significant amount more convenient for people that are to use it, which means more people are using it. There's actually a significant amount of people who are using Zorin in ratio to Path or Zorin Connect in ratio of Zorin OS itself versus people who use GSN in general because there's not that many who are even aware that it exists. And then when they do find out it exists, they don't understand the difference so between GSK and the that you still require. But most of the, but the, most of the time, the best marketing. So there's in terms basically there's that. Open source is but most of the time, the best marketing in terms of open source is powered by some company's marketing team. So talking about the big company marketing team. Of course, you thank you. Talking about uh, appreciate talk, you. Microsoft Microsoft that. you. So of that? course, thank you. Uh, uh, appreciate you uh, prompting that. PowerShell so. Marketing. Uh, Microsoft and it's made a PowerShell terminal like it's actually marketing good. video. It's, it's and on it's, the same vein of like it's good. some kind of like it's actually machine. good. It's, it's, it's on the same vein of like some kind of hype machine marketing. It's got Apple tendencies to it a little bit, and they and it's just and it's completely pointless. And what they're showing is not they know anyone who knows anyone knows what it is in the terms of what they're marketing to. But they know who they're marketing to, and they're doing it in a way that is, you know, uh, modern. There's a fancy animation, 3D modeling, 3D space elements, all kinds of stuff. And there's tons of benefits to how they're doing it because uh, you can actually use them as an example. Because how long have we had a terminal and been saying it's one of the most useful things in Linux, basically forever? How many people, any companies or projects have ever made a terminal app and tried to make it pretty and tried to make it? Like uh, a and fancy uh, animation was the marketing last for it. Anyone expected to not. do it and be successful. And the Microsoft was the last people anyone seemingly expected to actually do it and be successful and make it something so you using it, it you know, seemingly benign to look fun and still hip. And really when you start using it, it obviously uh, and at the very end of it, they show you like a sequence of where it started. Uh, and at the very end of it, they show you like a sequence of where it started and how it looked like, you know, garbage on 3.1, and then you eventually got to a better, unfortunately better, a good example changes and stuff. Of something that so the that is has had for unfortunately a, a good time. example never of something that the yet, Linux community yet, has had for a very long time, never took advantage of it, yet Microsoft comes not that important. So there is anything you think that is seemingly benign and not that important is. Could totally be depending on how you market it because it's marketing and presentation is and, uh, not this uh, it's, presentation. It's a fundamental is probably is the best thing you can do, <laughs> and uh, it's it's a fundamental piece to outreach to your users or your audience because any kind of uh, you know uh, outreach to your users or your audience because they're not going to uh, you know spend more time you than, you, than you would normally on any anything. Then you know so like, if you have to explain something, so if you have a brand, you have a just your original thing is say, this, is, this is what this is. So if you have a brand, you have like a the description, and you say, this is what this is. If you have to explain the words that you use to explain it, then it's not working. Just go back and redo it. So you want to, like, it needs to be simplified, but at the same time, it needs to be accurate and clear what it is. Now, if you're in, like, some kind of project that's uh, ridiculously, like, hardcore type stuff where you're making kernel modules or something, that can probably won't work regardless. 
but you still want to make it as simple and as clean and clear as possible there's, there's for people who, do. like myself, talk about it on the So any there's, there's many things that you can do, that and might not if you have any kind of uh, project that might not feel that it's worth talking about and worth making and there's also stuff, things that a lot of I can guarantee you it will benefit uh, you in many ways. And there's also like things that a lot of projects will a lot of times where I've uh, projects not take advantage of, as in like I talked about the crowdsourcing, there's a lot of times where I've talked to projects, uh, specifically this one project called you did and I joined it a long time ago when I first got into uh, Linux full time, and they, they were, I was asking them, how many times do you get donations, and they're like, what do you mean here and there? Five dollars, you know, here and there. Five dollars. What do you mean here and there? You know, forever. What? Five dollars, maybe twice. This is a great piece of software. Why are people not doing it? Why? What? Have you asked them? Why? This is a great piece of software. Why are people not doing it? If you don't ask for it, they're not going to donate because they don't know that you need it. Well, there you go. That's fine. That you're doing it. If you don't ask for it, they're not going to donate because they'll know that you need it. They know that you want it. Know that you're doing it for uh, as soon as building I, it better, I, getting I more to take over marketing, you know, attention I to built it. Them website, and as soon as I, 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 I helped them take over marketing, I built them a website, built them all kinds of stuff, and they get maybe a you know, couple hundred downloads a month. Uh, they they went from getting five thousand downloads a week, maybe a couple hundred downloads a month, uh, at least to a minimum of five thousand downloads a week, and are getting uh, at least you know five to up to twenty dollars a month in just donations, which is not a lot. And it's not and it's not a lot for in general, but in comparison to five to, to maybe ten dollars in like ten years, that's a huge difference. So. The, the, if you don't, if you don't ask them, they're not going to do it. Anything else? Yeah. So when you're discussing the Matomo for the analytics stuff, yeah. Um, how do you avoid? I, I know you mentioned something there about trying to avoid some of the GDR type stuff. How do you? You know, obviously it's a small project or open source project. In a lot of cases, you obviously don't have a legal defense team uh, if somebody you know, tries to. Bring up the or whatever. So how do you well, it depends on how do you skirt that really line? What you're well, it depends on so really the biggest what you're kind of trying to so avoid. Small projects or open so open projects that don't the biggest tip for, for so small projects or open source projects that don't that that's can't basically. afford to get someone to help them. You can set it up for using junk that collect. already have. That's basically the easy solution. Like you example, can set it up for using projects, projects, projects that already have. Uh, Something built into it, like for example, WordPress is a, is a great uh, option for that because they have built-in GDPR stuff. So if uh, someone is, you know, doesn't want you to have any of their data, you can just go into the thing, use the email that they give you. Anytime they made a comment or whatever, you can just automatically delete it. If you don't, so that, that is a is an option. Have built -in GDPR uh, but the if you don't have, if you're not using tools that have built-in GDPR features, Matomo is an example that you can just disable the stuff that you're trying to so you can actually make it where it doesn't affect any IP whatsoever. Thing. But the IP like is system to somewhat an identifiable thing for, like, for the system to be able to utilize in a future presence. Like so if someone comes back, it's if, the, if you don't have some kind of recognition of IP, then it's you know, going to make a lot of security information. And but at that point, Matomo you're going to have a, really a lot cool more than it's worth caring about. The, like I said, but Matomo has a really cool built-in feature of disabling the, like I said, the last two, and that gives you still country, but you can actually what it does disable is the, all, like the last three and still keep the first set. And what it does then is it takes the, exist, the, the leftover IP stuff uh, to, and then takes the, the IP of the, the full original IP, combines it into a hash, uh, and then just saves that hash. So it doesn't actually have any information of who that person is, but it does have a unique identifier. And that's one of the best things about Matomo is that it does compensate for that. The only thing, if you, if you turn your off IP completely off, it would kind of negate that, that hashing system. But if you have it on a little bit, that's enough. And so you can avoid that. Quick follow up, does it mean JavaScript? This is JavaScript running. It's 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 kind of it's kind of like Google Analytics kind of. This is JavaScript running. The way that you install it, it's just a it's 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 kind of it's kind of like Google Analytics kind of whatever. In the way that you install it, it's just a script that you slap on that put over a website or whatever. So, so you, can't, you can't tie it up to like your backend server where you'll get the IP address. Yes and no. You can, can do some things on a server side, but for the majority of the data. Yes and no. You can do some things on a server side, but for the majority of the data, 
interact with that side. It's going to be on the client side. So and mostly because the, the clients are only interact with that side anyway. The side. So there are times where you can uh, you can use the API to take stuff on the client side and then pipe it through the API to pull down that way. You can automate scripts with it and stuff like that, but not it's, it's mostly a client side usage thing. Next. Uh, you spoke a lot about crowdsourcing, and maybe you mentioned it, um, but uh, and, and I just apologize if I did. Um, okay, that's a good question. The because uh, it may remind me of something that. Okay, that's a good question. The because uh, it may remind me of something that I've complained about for a long time. Sure the camera can and uh, so the question is, uh, if you did, because I'm not sure the camera can pick it up that. But the uh, the question is, where do you go for the crowdsourcing? How do you find people who are willing to crowdsource? And the answer is, uh, again, everywhere, but that is, most public things you can do is like anything you can do uh, the best example I that is, is you don't have I don't know if it's a cop-out answer, somewhere. but uh, so the best example, example, example I can give you is if you don't have a presence, presence somewhere, not try to go build that presence and then ask for it. And even if the presence is not huge, you don't have to have a ton of followers, you just have to know, they have to know where to find you and, and easy find out test. I've had multiple Godzilla, times where people want to contribute to a project else, and they like find out that they're using some kind of Bugzilla or Redmine or something else, like some email mailing list structure that's just off their day. <laughs> and then um, they, and people will just turn or turn off completely. Somebody says, I use GitHub or GitHub. But the uh, example, if someone says, I use GitHub or GitLab, people are like, awesome, it way easier now to all these platforms. And I know people are And uh, people there's, are that kind of thing makes it a lot easier. So if you're, if you're on these platforms, and I know people are, uh, some people are like, refuse to use GitHub because Microsoft purchased it. But they purchased it because people are already using GitHub, and that means people are already using GitHub, and it makes it easier to get to work on the in a variety of ways. So even if you don't use it as your main source to modify, to control your source and do the versioning, you should at least have an account there so that people can find you easier. So if they, the, the biggest issue of crowdsourcing is not going to where people are and trying to put it in your own search for your own echo chamber, like essentially. There was one project, I won't specifically name the project, but uh, they were looking for marketing people to help them and they were going to hire them as employees to the, the, the foundation. And they put out a call for marketers to give resumes. And they, then they chose two employee, people to become know that they employees of the marketer as a marketer. I was not one of those employees because I didn't know that they I were asking for you later. Be marketers. I was like, hey, they got marketers. The reason I didn't know is because oh, I didn't find out a year later. Said, I was like, hey, they got marketers. Yeah, That's interesting. Gonna, uh, oh, and then one of the people who was in developer work said, yeah, well, we, we sent out a call like, to ask people who wanted to send their resume in. like, where did you do it? Oh, our mailing list so for like know just specifically for this particular type of thing. Know that you're doing what? That. So people have to know that you have that in the first place before you even know that you're doing this. If you even just the worst thing that you can possibly do is something like that. If you even just go on Twitter and that's then you do nothing else except post on Twitter. That's a thousand times better than posting on some random esoteric mailing list. So anything else? Yeah. Uh, um. Uh, 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 oh, uh, so in terms of analytics, uh, I mean, I'm not somebody who's particularly privacy conscious, uh, but I still, every time I install software, I see a, oh, we want to collect some analytics. Sure. Here's what we're going to collect. I still uncheck the box. Sure. So Miss. my question is, is that, is there anything that you could do, you know, for marketing, so like, just to, like, reword yes. that message and say, hey, like, Here's why we actually need this. Yeah. A lot of times yes. you read it, it's like, so okay, the best why are you thing about it is this? marketing yeah. is, is okay, absolutely 100% about presentation. So the best thing about it is marketing is, is absolutely 100% about presentation. There's a, there's a, I don't know if I there's there's a, there's a movie that, nope, uh, it's, it's there's a like movie called that, uh, and it's, it's and a ridiculous they're, they're, they're like animated movie called Megamind. Megamind is making and they're the yelling, and then they're, they're the, the, the villain the Megamind is making fun of like, the, the like superhero. Back and forth, and Megamind the says about superhero is like, uh, like they're arguing back and forth, and, and Megamind says something about how, uh, you know the difference between you and me? He goes, yeah, it, and, it, and it's like super elaborate thing. And that is the most like, important thing. Yeah, it, and, it, and it's like super elaborate people thing. Still like it. And that is like the Joker. most important thing because you can you know, be the villain and people will still like you. Like Joker. Character. People still like Joker. 
even uh, though he's a horrible if you have person. Some kind of humor and he has a character, so, uh, so uh, that, even if you have some, some kind of humor attached to it, people will still do it. So the same thing of that, if you take example for Firefox, when you go to see their main install Firefox and you load it up the first time, it asks you if you want to participate in that the data collection and then you choose what to share. But it asks you by there's some arguments weird thing of saying, saying choose what to share. Don't give them a no and it's just, it, it, it's like, there's some arguments uh, let's say, for example, say, you, want to, you, know, you know, don't give them a no out. And you want to it's like, for lunch. Uh, let's say, for example, you want to you know, meet someone you say, and hey, you want to meet them for lunch and then give them a business pitch. And, uh, you, know, you don't say, hey, would you like to meet me for lunch and, you know, I'll talk to you about blah, blah. You say, when would you like to meet, tomorrow or Tuesday? options are still yet. Something like that. So, so you give them, you give them options, but uh, both options are still yes. Share, you could argue that's what so in the same thing in presentation, uh, when you say choose what to share, you could argue that's what they're doing, share, sure. but they're still making it complicated, and people don't know what, what, so what do you, you mean share, I'm not sharing anything, analytics, you're are you trying to force them to share, or whatever. You so if you're, in this kind of sense of telemetry and analytics, if you're upfront about it, and you do it in a simple approach, that is the best the, the best thing I, I would suggest. Any other questions? Yep. So, uh, you said go to all the platforms. Yep. And uh, in a project, a project system I'm, I'm involved in, we've not intentionally done that, but people in the community have gone to those platforms and set up little sub-communities there. And now we find ourselves in a problem of having super fragmentation among where people are trying to get information from. Mm -hmm. And there's just not enough time today for developers or people who know enough about the project to sort of basically answer things. Sure. So there's problems with misinformation. Do you have any suggestions of how to address that and how to avoid that and how to well, there's multiple factors to that question I could want to break down. So the first of well, there's multiple factors to that question I could want to break down. So the first of is having it, being on different platforms and not having the, the project or the operations and brand it's not like owning those things. For a language if you have anything like that, you need to contact and let, it's not like a specific community for a language that you don't speak, you need to contact whoever controls it and ask for control. Are going to assume it's because it means that you need to so have it as the as a main brand because people are going to assume it's a main brand anyway. So even that. if you specifically say unofficial something, so for example, people are still going to go to that one thing because it's especially the only one. So for example, uh, Solus doesn't have a Telegram group, but there is a big Telegram group in Solus, and it says unofficial. People still go to it, and people even and, and if there's any person who was a part of that project who wants to help so that, and is that in is that group, they need to take people control. just assume, well, that's the social group. Should just go and offer it. So that, that is a negative thing they need so to take like control, and the people who have control should just go and offer it to If you have a platform, any kind of social media So like that is the same kind of situation where if you have a platform, any kind of social media platform, if someone else has control of it, you need to get it as soon as you can. The, the but as far as the misinformation goes, there's, and what I mean by proactive, the, the being proactive is the most important thing. And what I mean by proactive is I mean you provide information before something people you're working can on. Give, you, give wrong information. And it's not super so private. if you have something that you're working on, just put it out there. and it's not just super go, private that you're worried about it getting out there, just put it out there. Um, just go on Twitter and say, hey, I'm working on this, here's a screenshot or something. You know, um, there's a, a good example is a KDE used to have or no one Pay attention to what they're doing. While they're no one care at all comes out. for the, the stuff that they're, keeping, they're, that they're working well while they're, they're working on it until the newest release comes but if you look at out. Once the release comes out, there's a big hype around it, but in that process, no one care. But if you look at that recently for the past uh, few months or so, maybe even a year, the uh, KE usability and I forgot the full name of it, the blog that's been putting out by uh, Nathan Graham, he's been putting out like what has been going on with the community. Whether he's doing it or whether someone else is doing it, he's giving his synopsis and stuff. And that information makes it so much easier for people to share the proper information because they're not so hearing it's, things it's and then arbitrarily changing what they're supposed to be really no guarantee. So it's it's a situation that I think that there's really no guarantee fix, uh, but if you presence approach it in the sense of trying to get having a, a, a official presence on everything you can, that's the first step, and then also provide as much information as you can feel comfortable about providing. And uh, also another thing is making people sure how, how many people are like for example, part of the project. Some people will be, uh, you know, like for example, you have a forum, make sure it's sure known that the people are specific moderators or specific parts of the team that don't hide the fact that they're contributing, promote them for contributing, and that will make them want to contribute 
read more so you and want them to them care about what they're, they're saying is most helpful to the project. That is so if you give them attention, attention and credit for the work they that they're contributing, care that is no way to avoid their misinformation because not available, they will care more about it, and therefore, even if you are not available as the as a project and member, give them, like, they will go to those people and ask them for what they And, the, and once you give them like they do see some, some kind of recognition for it, they'll give care more to so make sure that the they, is, if they do see some misinformation, they'll help to fix it too. But so that's the best thing is just is to kind of crowdsource that aspect too. Especially if you already have. There's really no silver bullet to fix it. Yeah, especially if you already have some convolution but and if there's anything you could uh, take over, unfortunate like extra communities that are building around it but if there's anything you could take over i would suggest to do so as soon as possible okay is there any other questions Uh, you know, is Matomo particularly yes. heavyweight? Like, Absolutely. can you get away with running it's it on the same it's server as a web server for small heavy sliders? Yes, but it's not Absolutely. light either. It's, uh, it is it's running it like some JavaScript. Not heavy necessarily, but it's not light either. Because it is running it like small JavaScript all the time, so it, has, it does have some heaviness to it. But it's not like absurdly heavy. You can put it pretty much uh, put it on whatever you want. I put it on even like I've tested on like uh, ridiculously low cost hosting accounts. Like uh, like $2.50 accounts, you see how far it would go, and it would go perfect, it would just it would run perfectly fine, plus for the website, website and like two other sites as well, so uh, the, those were not, they were just testing traffic, so they're not huge traffic, so it was mostly the time doing everything, but it ran fine, so if you put it on like a DigitalOcean droplet or something like that, you're not going to have any issue whatsoever. You had a question? Yeah. Yeah, um, so... I'm getting the sense that there's a general uh, mindset that's accepted, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the people we're marketing to, or hypothetically here, would be already accepting of the free and open source mindset. Um, would there be any recommendations you would give for using that as a selling point in marketing for those who well, haven't okay. already? If they haven't embraced it, kind of embraced because they'd have to understand source. it first. And the whole well, okay, if they haven't embraced it now. You want to market because they have to understand it first. The, whole, is, the most important you know, thing is when you do marketing, you want to market something that so is there a person you know, doesn't know consumable by the person you're trying to give the audience to from. So if they're a person who doesn't know our open source, open source exists, you could open source marketing you know, participate in a collective effort but if you to make open source marketing specifically to explain it. But if you were to market it as open source and your goal is not to get people who are already aware That's of open source, with the example it's just going to add an extra barrier to, for them to understand what's going on. That That's why Windows with the example of the Windows terminal thing, watching that, that they have no it's idea. something that but Windows people have, have no idea what it is. Know. Even watching that video, they have no idea what it is. But they're interested in what it is and trying to find out what, how they can use it, how it's useful. Even if it is just uh, so in that you know, sense, fancy that moving, Windows moving around in 3D space. The open source if the person uh, so aware of in it. that sense, I would say that don't try to go for the open source if the person is not aware of it. Um, one of the big factors and of if they are aware of it, feel free to do it. It's definitely uh, but a, one, one of the big factors of marketing in this community is to do so. Say, you know, uh, but if you want to go for an audience that's just any one period, I would say you know take take it as most the most your marketing your marketing campaigns is the most broad as you can. While still being on target, on, on topic, and still being useful to what you think questions? is the you know represents your brand and everything. All right, cool. I Any got. Other questions? I finished super late, and thanks to everybody helping with All right, the questions. Cool. I got. I finished super late, and thanks so, to everybody helping with the questions. Are, uh, I'm actually kind of on time with the ending. Uh, so <laughs> I think the. the I or, uh, kind of so I appreciate all that. Uh, so I think that uh, just a kind of. In conclusion, type out, thing. You have to let them know if you have a project and you want to get people can. to try it out, you have to let them know that it even exists. You have to confront it as much as you can, that means that and you have to present it in the best way that you can. It and way. even if that, that means that, that you the next step, need to have, have people help you present it in that way, to, uh, that is the, that is the next step. I would uh, say allow the first thing you should do is and also try to uh, create a place to allow people to find you, and also promote people to come to you. Because the worst thing to do is when I've seen people like. Well, how can people what find you? Well, you can just you well, can go up my website. Like What's the website? Like, like, uh, well, um, it's like a blogger.net or something. You need to uh, like, get a better domain, by the way, if you do. So, if you have a dot, uh, uh, if you like need GitHub. to uh, get a better domain, by the way, if you do. If you have a dot, uh, a GitHub.io page, get a domain. It costs like $5. Um, depending on, you know, you get, you get like a dot club or something. If you have anything that's not like, like a, if you're on Weebly, uh, if you get, if you if you have anything that's not like, like a, if you're on Weebly, don't use it. 
and uh, use anything else really. Uh, even just don't use it. And uh, use anything else really. Uh, even squares. Uh, you should definitely uh, you should do something really that gives you brewing uh, at least a little. Uh, you should so definitely do something that gives you. You should promote uh, it. At least a little bit of you know. You if you care about your project, you, know, you should promote it. You should like promote it with the best intentions you can. You, don't have you should give it the best, you know, step forward in front of the best first impression. If you don't have a good domain, you don't have a good, uh, you don't necessarily have the best logo, you don't have the not really necessary. But if you least have, let people know when you go to the website that you put effort in. If you've gone to, have you ever gone to the Debian website and go, this so, is amazing? Yeah, like if you, and if you go to a certain no, website, no, no, it, it is impressive the so, effort they put in. Yeah, and, like if, and if, and if you go to a certain website, like the, it, so it is impressive the effort they put in. Is like, and even if you've never heard of it, and they like the Enzo OS is like, a lot of people have never heard of that one, and they put a ton of effort into their market. So they do with the whole green thing, which might work for them. Uh, but at least put some effort in because there's a ton of websites are not that doing it. need it. I don't know why. And uh, need to there's a lot of things that are not doing pretty much it. After the talk I don't know why, but you need to change it as soon as possible. Do it immediately. Pretty much after the talk, if you it's have one of those things, just go throw it up there. Way, that's do it immediately than because than you need to. Even, even if you just go to WordPress, get a template, throw it up there. So, uh, that's better. That concludes my talk. Thank you for coming. And yeah. So that concludes my talk. Thank you for coming. Yeah. 